Today I'm going to share with you three great ways to make money photographing men. And I'm going to show you my favorite lighting setups to do so. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. If you visit my website or you check out my portfolio, you'll notice that a majority of the images on my site are of women, a lot of beauty, a lot of fashion. That being said, I make a lot of my income photographing men and there are three main categories that, this, that I get hired to shoot over and over again. Headshots, commercial or catalog work, and then finally, photographing athletes. These three categories have brought me continuous income and it's something for you to consider that if your work really only focuses on creating images for women, you're missing out on half the population. So I think it's really important not only to have some experience photographing men, but to have good samples of work of what you can do so you can present these to potential clients. Now today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one sample lighting setup for each of these three categories. But if you would like to learn more and you really wanna know the lighting setups that bring in the most money or that I get hired to produce over and over again, you wanna check out my class, Money Making Photography Setups. I have a link to this in the description below. And not only do I tell you the types of lighting that I use over and over again, but I show you the variations that you can create very simply to be able to provide a lot of different options for your clients. All right, so with all that being said, let's jump in and we're gonna take a look at headshots. Headshots are obviously an important part of income for many different portrait photographers. And so the lighting setup that I wanted to show you here is something that I use over and over again because it allows me to create a lot of variation very quickly. This is going to be a three light setup. I have a main light, a rim light, and a background light. But what is nice about this is as I am photographing the subject, I can quickly make changes. So I can choose, do I want just the main light and the background light? Do I want just the main light and the rim light? Do I want all three together? Do I want to subtly move the main light to add more or take away shadows? And so this is why I think setting up these three lights and then quickly turning them on and off will allow you to create a lot of variation for your client, but just in a very short period of time. Now, for headshots, I would say most of the time, the background that I choose is a Savage Universal Fashion Gray. It is a nice neutral gray that if I want it to go darker, I can by feathering my main light or adding a grid, or if I want to make it lighter and brighter, I can light it. In fact, I could light it to be almost white. And so I find the Fashion Gray to be very versatile. But one of the things that you should consider is the concept of a portrait, not just being a headshot, but perhaps a headshot leading into personal branding. So how does the image represent that person? Maybe their company or how they are trying to portray themselves. And so although I recommend Fashion Gray as a good starting point, here you will see that we have a beige background. This is Savage Universal Beige. And the reason we chose it is because we wanted to emphasize the warmth of his skin as well as the warmth of his wardrobe. So let's take a look at the main light. The main light that I have here is my go-to modifier for headshots. I am using a Profoto three foot Octobox. An Octobox is great because it creates soft light and it's really nice because you can use it also in smaller spaces. So if I'm setting up in a boardroom or in a living room, I can still get a nice soft quality of light and bring it relatively close to my subject. Typically I recommend having it a little bit off to the left hand side of the frame or you can have it to the right hand side of the frame depending on your space so that the light is not creating too much shadow but it does create a little bit of sculpting and definition. This is where I start. So let me show you what it looks like with just this single Octobox. That's perfect. As you can tell, I could absolutely do this headshot with just a single light. Like this looks beautiful. If I thought the shadows on the opposite side of the light were a little dark, I could bring in a reflector or a white V-flat. Or if you're shooting in a small space and there's a white wall right there, well, you have a built-in reflector. And so this is a great place to start, but then you could add a variation. Maybe you're looking at this and I think another way that you could separate the subject out and lighten up that shadow would be to add a rim light. And so that's why I have my second light off to the right hand side of the frame. This is a one by four foot strip softbox with a grid. This is perfect for creating rim lights. What this is going to do is give him a nice highlight on the side of his jawline for a little bit of definition to the jawline and then also separate him out from the background. So let me turn on that second light. So you can see now there's a lot more attention drawn to the side of his face and his jawline. Now there's just one word of warning. If somebody is losing hair or they're balding, you may not want to use this rim light because it will draw a little bit more attention to the shininess of the head. So in that case, I would lose the rim light altogether and perhaps just go with a backlight. 
But for this shot, we're going to work with all three lights. And so we're going to add on the light that I have on a floor stand behind my subject. It is directly behind him, so it will give me a nice even glow behind. Uh, I could use this bare bulb if I wanted to just lighten up the entire scene, or I can add a grid if I want a little halo of light. So for this setup, I am using a 20 degree grid, which is going to give me a glow of light directly behind the subject's head. I love how this looks. I think that the addition of a background light makes this look a little bit more refined. It creates a little bit more depth to the shot and a little bit more separation. But you'll notice it's not overpowering, it's not too bright, you wanna keep this subtle. So we have a three foot octobox, a one by four foot strip softbox, and a grid on the background. You can use one, two, or three lights or any combination of these and it will give you a ton of variation. So then of course, the most important part of a headshot is the expression and directing your subject and the pose. And so I'm going to grab that now. But before I do, I'm gonna talk real quick about my gear. I'm using the Canon R5 and the Canon RF 70-200 2.8 lens. This is a great portrait lens. It is my go-to. When I'm shooting in the studio, I tend much more often to go for my zoom lenses that give me a little bit more flexibility. All right, so I think we're ready for the headshot. Obviously, there are a ton of clients that need headshots. And so this is one of the places I would begin. By the way, in the links below, I also have a link to my headshot lighting recipe guide to give you a lot more options, a lot more variations you can provide to your clients. So we've got headshots out of the way. Let's move on to our next money-making setup. Our next money-making setup when photographing men is commercial or catalog photography. And so what's great about these setups is that they don't need to be complicated. In fact, they're not supposed to be. The idea is that you are showcasing the clothing. And so in general, you're working with a simple background, a little bit more commercial styling. And this is something that's in demand all the time, whether it's e-com online or it's catalog, or maybe it's more of a stylized portrait. There are many different variations of this. Another category this falls into would be something called a lookbook. Uh, a lookbook is basically a catalog or a showcase of clothing for a designer for uh, a particular collection they have. All right, so for this setup, what we're going to do is we're going to do just one light. You can achieve this with a single light, and I'll also recommend when you might need to add a second. All right, so let's begin with our background. Now, when you're photographing catalog or commercial portraits, there's no right or wrong background. It kind of depends. Uh, traditionally, especially for e-commerce, you would go with a neutral background. Often it would be white or it would be a fashion gray like I mentioned before. Although I do see currently there's a trend for slightly warmer backgrounds. It's a little bit more welcoming and it's flattering to the skin tones. And so in this case, we have selected a warmer background. This is the Savage Universal Eggnog. So it's a desaturated but warm tone. It's not super, super light, super dark. It's just, it's kind of a neutral warm. All of the strobes I'm using today are Pro Photo D2s. This is my strobe of choice because they're fast and reliable. What's more important for this setup right now is the modifier. I'm using a Profoto Extra Large Umbrella with Diffusion, which basically translates to big soft light source. Uh, you could use a five foot octabox or other light sources, but I like the Extra Large Umbrella because it's easy to set up. So this gives me a big soft light source, and I wanna show you what we're working with so far when photographing my subject. Now for these images, I've switched over. Instead of using a 7200, I am now using the R5 paired with the RF 24 to 105. The 24 to 105 gives me more of a range. And so if I'm shooting full length or mid length shots, I can do so with that focal range. Uh, whereas a 7200 would be a little too close. All right, so let me show you so far that first light, what the shot's looking like. So far so good. You can see that everything is looking nice and clean. It's looking a little bit more commercial, but you will notice that the left-hand side of the frame is a little brighter than the right-hand side of the frame. And of course that is due to the fall off of light. Whatever's closest will be brighter. And right now the umbrella is pointed a little bit more towards that back left-hand corner. So there's a couple of things you could do. Um, you'll notice that the subject is quite far away from the background. That helps us out so that we're not casting shadows in the background. If he were four, five, six feet further back, so closer to that background, his shadow would definitely be on it. And then that's not as clean as I'm looking for. So that's why he's so far ahead. One of the things I could do though, if I wanted to even out the background, is I could do something called feathering the light, which basically means I change the angle of it. 
I change the positioning. Like it physically stays in the same place, but I just rotate it. So there's not a right or wrong approach to this. It depends on, do you want the background to be lighter or do you want it to be darker? In this case, let's say I want something a little moodier, just a little bit. You know, this is catalog, so it's not meant to be super dark and dramatic. What I could do is point the umbrella across the frame. We're going to angle it. And so less light will hit the back left. Okay, let's give this a test. So the difference between these two shots is you now see the left-hand side of the frame is a little bit darker. Overall, the exposure has stayed the same on our subject because the light is still clearly hitting him. We've just changed his trajectory. Now, speaking of trajectory, if you look at the subject, obviously the side of the face on the right-hand side is darker. It's the shadow side of the face. And this is going to be true of the clothing as well. Now, he's wearing black. And so black, of course, often needs a little bit more light. The shadows are going to fall darker more quickly. And so the fact that I have feathered the light, so it is pointing across the frame, is a perfect opportunity to add a V-flat. The reason is that it's pointing across the frame. If I put a white bounce card, a white V-flat there, it will catch all that light, bounce it back in, and give me detail back into my shadows. This is something I would recommend for sure if you're going for catalog or commercial, because you're not really going for something that is meant to be dark and dramatic. It is meant to be lighter and have more detail. The whole point is to showcase the clothing. So I'm going to add in the white V-flat. We have not completely flattened out the shot, but we have lifted up the shadows. All right, so this is how I'm going to shoot this image because I like the tonalities. I do like it a little darker. Uh, what's nice as well is depending on how I color grade this, or if perhaps I change it to a black and white, I could make this look more like a fashion editorial. I think that when you go for darker shadows, a little bit more sculptural, a little more dramatic, it moves into the realm of fashion editorial. When you have lighter shadows, more flat light, uh, a little bit more upbeat feel, that puts us more towards commercial catalog. The reason I wanted to mention this is that if you were shooting this for a catalog, you might add a second light. The second light that I recommend would be right here, like right in front of the scene, straight, like centered to camera, and I would add maybe another umbrella with diffusion. That would be a fill light just intended to lift up the shadows. But that's going to be really important, especially if somebody is wearing black or darker clothing, because you want to be able to see the texture. Like what is the material of the pants versus the top versus the shirt? And if it falls to too dark shadow, you can't tell that. You wouldn't be able to see the details. So if you were doing this for catalog where you really need to showcase the clothing, add a second light source right here to dial up and give more detail back to those shadows. All right, so uh, let's take a look real quick. I want to show you something. All right, so you can see this is the first image where the background wasn't quite as dark and it's giving us a little bit more of an, an upbeat vibe. Then here's where I feather the light. And then this over here is when I've added the fill to the shadows. But I do wanna show you that if I, for example, change this to black and white, dramatically pop the contrast. Let me darken it down a little bit more. See how that's going much more editorial, a lot more mysterious. However, if I go for the shot with a lighter background, maybe I bring more fill light back into the shadows, you're getting something that definitely looks a lot cleaner and a lot more commercial. So this exact same lighting setup with just subtle adjustments to the light as well as to the color grade will make all of the difference. All right, so I already mentioned that I like the more dramatic shot because I can take it two different ways. So let's get that shot. I am going to back up and get down low because it's going to make the subject look tall and empowered. It will make his movements even more dramatic. I don't want this to be too static, so I'm going to have him walk, move, flow the jacket, bring the image to life rather than just standing there and posing. move on to our third and final setup for money-making photography with men. Our final setup is going to be under the theme of athletes. So this would be for athletic wear or portraits of athletes or for a sports team. And there's a few different modifications we're going to make that are very different than what you saw in the previous setups. The idea here is that I want the light to be a little more dramatic. I want it to have a little bit more shadow because I want to show the musculature of the body. And I also want to consider some more pronounced rim lights so they can carve out the side of the human form as well. And so for this setup, of course, you could do a version that's cleaner, higher key, 
on white, but most often I am asked to do something that's a little more dramatic. Now, I'm going to show you a setup that is really simple, quite versatile, but don't forget that you can spice this up by adding gels into the scene, you could add some haze, you could add a color fill. Like there are a lot of variations you can do to the foundations of this setup to give yourself more creative results. So let's begin with our main light. The main light I have here is a white beauty dish. Now a white beauty dish, while still a relatively soft modifier, it has a little bit more pop, and a little bit more contrast to it. This is what I prefer when I'm trying to show the muscles uh, of the human form. Now, this is a white beauty dish, but if you were photographing, let's say, a bodybuilder or someone whose skin is meant to be oily, shiny, you may consider switching over to a silver beauty dish. My recommendation would be to actually put oil on the body. But what the silver beauty dish does is it emphasizes the specular highlights, and so it would make that shine even shinier. Now, I have the beauty dish centered on the frame because I want it to be symmetrical for this shot. But remember, if you want a more dramatic result, you could move the light off to the side, perhaps giving yourself even Rembrandt light, that little triangle of light underneath the eyes. It will, of course, make everything lower key and more dramatic, but that may be what you're going for. So let me show you what the beauty dish is looking like. You can see that compared to the first two setups that there's a little bit more definition under the jawline. It's a little darker, more dramatic, more contrast to the shot. Now the background that I have here is a Savage Universal Fashion Gray. Now this is a really versatile background because if I add light to it, it gets brighter, lighter, but if I don't light it, or if I have the subject and the light very far away, it becomes much more dramatic, which is what you see in this shot. That's why it's a little darker and a little richer. I like this background as well because if I wanted to add more lights, I could also add a background light behind him, maybe create a glow. Kind of like we had in the first setup with the headshot, I could take a 20 degree grid, point it at the background behind him, add a little bit more separation. But instead, what I want to do in this case is actually emphasize his muscles. And so what would do a better job separating him out and emphasizing the muscles would be rim lights. Wherever there is a highlight in the scene, it's kind of like an arrow telling you to look there. And so if I put highlights on the arms, it's saying, look at the shape of these muscles. And so I want a symmetrical shot. And that reason I have added one light on either side of the background. Uh, I have one by four foot strip soft boxes with grids. These are perfect for rim lights because they'll give us a nice even highlight. You could use a bare bulb if you purposely wanted to create flare, but they're not as even. It would be much brighter around, let's say the shoulders and the top of the arms, but it would fade quickly to shadow. For these strip soft boxes, the reason I have grids is I want to reduce the lens flare in my shot, which would be really important if I were shooting in a small space. I am in a big space, so I have less to worry about with flare, but if you had to condense this or work in a small space, let's say a, a living room or a conference room, the grids are going to do a lot to help you out. All right, so I'm gonna turn on those two rims. Okay, so that perfect. Notice in this shot just how much attention is drawn to the side of his body, also to the side of his jawline. Now, if we were doing a shot that was much more about physique, remember the bodybuilder, uh, something like that, if the shirt was removed and you had the subject step back, so closer to those rim lights so that they come around the side, they would start to wrap around the body a little bit. And if the subject turns towards one side or the other, those rim lights will actually rake across the muscles which emphasizes them even more, which is why I really like this setup. I can adjust the rim lights to have them wrap more or wrap less. I can adjust the main light over to have more shadow or have it centered for less. So this is a three light setup, the beauty dish white centered and the two strip soft boxes as rims. Now uh, I'm gonna actually shoot this shot, but I want to remind you, I could, for example, go with maybe a, a warm, cool shot. So I could add two orange gels to the rim lights and that would give a warmth to the separation. But then I could add another light, let's say a blue fill here in the front and make all the shadows really cool. So I could make this much more creative by switching, adding gels, adding a fill light. Uh, this will also look really nice in a high contrast black and white as well. All right, so now that we have the light looking great, let's get the shot. So there you have it, three different approaches to making money when photographing men. You can photograph headshots, catalog and commercial shots, or photograph athletes. Now each one of these takes a different approach, but of course you'll want to personalize it, customize it to your client. Make sure that you are reflecting their brand, their needs, and of course, their appearance. 
Now, if you are interested in making money from photography, specifically checking out the setups that personally have made me the most money over my career, from beauty photography to personal branding to on-location portraits, you wanna check out the description below because I have a class called money-making photography setups. And in this, I go in depth with both a video and a lighting recipe guide. So that's gonna get you started so that you have in your pocket setups that are guaranteed to make you money and of course, to make your clients happy. So if you'd like to see the gear used in the making of these three different setups, check the description below because I have links to adorama.com where you can find all of this gear and much more. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video and you've enjoyed the content, whether it's about lighting or business techniques, be sure to like and subscribe because we have so many more videos just like this one coming your way. See you next time, guys.